Hey, it's you guys. Remember me? We met during that whole thing with the sword breaker. You convinced me to stop being a bandit. Yes, I remember you. You made it to Logress. Yeah, I finally saved enough to open up my bandit cuisine restaurant. I'm just looking for the right location now. You didn't steal that money, did you? Hey, I said I stopped being a bandit, didn't I? I took on honest work to save up for this. Repairing roads, delivering relief supplies, lots of hard labor. You really did turn over a new leaf. I think what you've done is incredible. Really? All right. <laughs> it was all worth it just to see that smile. Now that you've become a good man, I'm sure that even more wonderful things will come your way. Have you decided on your menu? Almost. I've got the eggless wild mushroom omelet and the highwayman stew, but I feel like I need one more standout dish. There's a tavern in this town that has Mabo curry that's just out of this world. I want to try to beat him. Do you have any good ideas for me? Maybe something that'll help me draw in the ladies? Hmm. Maybe add a dessert menu? That might help. I know. Like a theft by chocolate cake. Or a roasted pear crime brulee tart? Well, that's certainly aggressive. Yeah, those sound great. Now my menu's complete. Hey, uh, when I'm a big success, you want to get hitched? <laughs> you shouldn't tease an exorcist. I'm not teasing. I'm serious. Marry me. Well, good luck with your restaurant. Ooh, rejection hurts. Miss Holier Than Thou delivered some just desserts. Sweet rejection. It'd make a good cake name. Ah, the taste of defeat is bittersweet. The Lord of Calamity has brought fear to the entire kingdom. Grim whisperings echo through the streets in every town. It's gloom and grief all around. So many people at church have lost someone close to them. But it is in the saddest times when smiles are most needed. Dark expressions cast dark shadows. Smile in the face of sadness. Now that's a real man. That old guy knows what's what. I'm not saying you need to make light of everything, but try to leave a little room for joy in your life. Like when you eat good food, or see a beautiful flower. Or even this fountain. Water wells forth, a symbol of hope. Even though life may be hard, I keep at it. I work hard so that this fountain never runs dry. And I'll help you maintain it, so that it stays a place where people can come to feel at ease. Now that there are less exorcists around, we can rely on the Abbey to do everything for us. We need to start by doing what we can do to make this world a brighter place. So where are you going to start? 
With everything as harsh as it is now, people feel like they need to sacrifice excess and live frugally. I agree that we should act in moderation and refrain from excessive luxury. But we need joy to keep us going, right? That's why we've decided to open up a restaurant. We want to make people happy by making good food and good drink. What sort of food will you make? That's what I'm researching now. I'm walking the world, trying different foods. I heard they have this amazing Mabo curry. But to be honest, the place looks a little intimidating. Just treat it like it's any other restaurant. I've been in there, and the Mabo curry is great. Really? So it's a Mabo curry even the kids can like? I gotta try me some of this. I wish you wouldn't call me a kid. My bad. I didn't mean to step on your pride there. I was too preoccupied with thinking about our restaurant's mission statement, and I neglected to consider your feelings. I'm terribly sorry. It's not that big of a deal. But what do you mean by mission statement, anyway? We're a restaurant that's fun for the whole family. Our slogan is, we'll feed you from the cradle to the grave. It's supposed to be a place people eat. You might not want to mention graves. I think a person would need a lot of courage to go eat there. Whoa. Why didn't I think about that? You seem to miss a lot. Are you sure you're up for running a restaurant? We'll be fine. I studied up on a lot of restaurant management, and I plan on hiring a really good chef. All that's left is to select a menu and come up with a new slogan. Instead of cradle to grave, how about from this life to the next life? Your food's killing them either way. Rats, I can't think of anything. How about... Fine dining, from baby teeth to dentures. Not bad, eh? That's fantastic. It gets rid of that whole dying thing. I love it. We'll use it. They've got a long road ahead of them. Welcome. You came back. I did. This place is important to me. Are you sure it's okay to be in a town like this? Don't worry about us. Besides, I'm more worried about the bar. I'm only away for a little while, and look at this place. The casks are empty, and all the food tastes like dirt. Just a little bit ago, we finally got a delivery in. It was barely enough to open up shop. Do you have enough to make Mabo curry? I do. Great! Thanks for worrying about us. But leave the town to the townsfolk. You should just focus on what you have to do. Just make sure you don't have any regrets. Thanks, Tabitha. The Abbey is telling everyone to stay away from the Palamedes ruins, because a vicious demon has settled in them. It's a real nasty piece of work. Likes to call its buddies over just to devour them. And it's only getting more aggressive over time. Not even the exorcists have been able to keep it under control. If you know what's good for you, you'll all stay away from there too. A demon that devours other demons and gets more brutal. That sounds like venomization. If it's bringing in other demons just to eat them, then yeah. I'd bet it's acting on instinct. Trying to live and be strong, even if that means eating its fellow demons. Why, that's positively alluring. And how is that exactly? You know how when it's late at night and you just know you shouldn't have that snack, but there it is and it's so tempting? Hmm. If it's been at this for a while, I bet it'll make for a pretty tough opponent. Yeah, and if Velvet devoured it, she might become a lot stronger. It sounds dangerous to me. Hmm. To feed or not to feed? That is the question. We were hoping to put on a comedy routine. Any way you can fit us in? I can, but folks in Yisult are picky when it comes to comedy. You'd better know what you're doing. I love a good challenge. Wow, Rokuro. You actually feel like helping out? Believe it or not, I've always been interested in theater. I thought it would be good for building courage. I think 
think you have enough courage already, but for now, I think we should set your sights low. I'll do most of the talking, you just respond to me and follow along. Okay, but if you start giving me some jabs, am I permitted to counterattack? As long as it's not with your sword. <laughs> That's not exactly reassuring. Let's get going, Magilu. We've got a show to do. Oh boy, I'm not sure about this one. Hi there! We're Magilu and Rokuro, a wild rough and tumble pair! <laughs> Magic Kazam! The weather's so nice and soft, isn't it? Especially the sea breeze. Speaking of which... Sea breezes are bad for swords. If you don't keep them polished, the salt will rust them. Uh, I suppose that's good advice for any sword enthusiasts out there. But anyway, doesn't the air make you want to eat seafood? Ah, <sighs> sashimi, fresh boiled fish on the shore, seafood bowls. So many kinds look so delicious, but... And fillets, too. You can't forget those. It takes true mastery to be able to use a blade so finely. Every creature, not just fish, has delicious spots that make for perfect cuts if you know where to find them. Um, that's kind of gross, but okay. Some seafood that tastes good looks downright weird, you know? You've got octopuses, you've got swordfish, you've got... Swordfish! <laughs> now, if there's one fish out there I'd love to duel at least once, it's that one for sure. Um, you know there's not much I can do with these sudden wild tangents, right? No, 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 you see, I was just making a gag about how I'm a swordsman, so a swordfish would be like my rival, you get it? Oh, just shut up. Oh. oh okay. So you've got octopuses, swordfish, you've got those freaky deep-sea anglerfish. Some say the more bizarre-looking the fish, the better its taste. Maybe it's true. I love pufferfish, and they're really weird, round-shaped. Speaking of round animals, I once met this round-looking guy named Armadillo. I'd never seen anyone so round before or even since. Ah, I can't take it anymore! You're a nightmare to work with! <laughs> that turned out pretty funny. Yeah, well, I feel like our material could have been better. What's your take on it? I'll just say one thing. If nothing else, your partner was a convincing fool. I don't think he had to act much. You think so? No. You're just a free spirit nobody can hope to control. Your attention, please! I've tabulated the results and I've come to the conclusion that... You're all hopelessly unfunny! I'm sorry. I don't really care how it went. But when you put it that way, I get a little pissed off. Anyway, that's why I'll be teaming up with Bienfu to take on Modulu. Works for me! I'm ready when you are, Miss Magilu! Which bit are you gonna do? Your specialty, Cat Emperor? Or the surefire automaton assault? Neither. We need brute force to win, so I'm going with Elysian Thunder! Which means that when things are at their peak, we're gonna hit the audience with lots of thunder, right? Right! Thunder in the form of relentless ad-libbing, as much as we can possibly handle! Okay! I'll scout out some local material we can use for our opening warm-up, too! Great! You do that! You two are really in sync. Couldn't you two just have teamed up from the start? It's almost like the whole thing was an elaborate joke just so she could have this punchline. <sighs> well, now with that settled, let's make our way to Logros and meet up with Modulu. Showtime, Modulu! Come out and face me, preferably unprepared! Modulu isn't doing any shows right now. Hmm? Why not? Oh, did she get scared when she heard that Bienfu and I were teaming up? No. Modulu and her teacher had a big fight. From what I've heard, it sounds like she's run away from home. Uh, do you know what happened? <laughs> she just kept going on about how she wanted a break from practicing. So? She's young. She probably just wants to go out and have some fun. Preposterous! If she takes even one day off, it takes three to get her back in form! Even so, shouldn't you at least hear her out? All I've done is hear her out! She mentioned something about wanting to go to the Zamal Grotto, but I wouldn't have any- Did you say Zamal Grotto? That place is a nest of vicious demons! What?! Hmm, vicious demons, you say? If Modulu really went there, then victory could end up being mine by default! 
This isn't a joking matter. We have to go look for Majulu. Oh, my precious Lulu. to Volta and ran away. Is that right? No, it's not like that. I... Say no more. I used to have a real pain of a teacher, too. I know what it's like. Teachers aren't good for much other than running their mouths and bossing people around. They just try to pick out your flaws. They don't even see how hard their students work for them. Yeah. Volta wouldn't even listen to me when I tried explaining why I wanted to come here. He's always like that. All he cares about is dancing. He won't talk about anything else. It's just that sometimes there are other things I want to talk about. Huh, I hear you on that. Surely you can see you don't need to work yourself to death just to please that mean old man. If you need somewhere to go, we always have room in Magilu's menagerie. I don't know. I don't think I'm cut out for it. Lulu, are you all right? Sir, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? Don't you know this place is dangerous? I, I just... I heard there might be an herb here that could make your injury stop hurting so much. You came here... for me? What were you thinking? You think it's just all right to throw your incredible talent down the drain like that? Now just a minute! Lulu, the only thing I care about anymore is seeing you become the greatest dancer in the world. I know it's selfish of me. I don't mind if you hate me for it. Just whatever you do, don't waste your talent. 
Lulu, your dancing brings so much joy to people. And it's during a time when there isn't a lot of joy to go around. Volta. No, no, no! Horrible, terrible, contrived! What kind of shoddy performance is this? You're a disgrace to Moggy Lou's menagerie! You're an eyesore! Get out of my sight! Huh? What's with you? I'm saying this isn't the place to be doing any of this! Magic again! It's so pretty. Fear the might of Moggy Lou, the greatest witch in a hundred years! A third-rate dancer like you can't even hope to compete with the likes of me! Stand in awe, student and teacher alike! As if we would! I might not be able to compete at your level right now, but just you wait. One day my dancing will beat you! Me and my teacher's dancing won't lose, even if it's to your magic! Lulu. Oh, really? Then it sounds like you and your teacher have lots of work ahead of you. But whenever you want to challenge Moggy Lou's menagerie, we'll be ready. Thank you, Moggy Lou. Huh? For what? I mean, for spurring Modulu on. Color me surprised. Well, I don't know if I'd say that. Who can say? It's anybody's guess what Modulu and Volta do from here on out. Very true. She could be crushed under the weight of his expectations. She could simply reach her limit and lose hope. Neither teacher or student could abandon the other. And say she one day meets his standards of perfection. Who knows whether it would even make her happy. Mogilu, are you sure you aren't talking about... I'll say this much. It's human nature to end up wanting to stay with someone. If that person is someone who needs you. Humans are weak like that. But that's what also makes them human. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Look at me. I don't even have a punchline for this one. Yeah, are you sure you're not running a fever? It's all right. It's a nice change of pace. Yes, but only on occasion. Miss Mogilu, what's gonna happen to all that material I practiced for her act? Nothing, obviously. Yeah! There's your punchline. Videl's Omega Elixir recipe calls for. I can't believe you actually found it. We have to go tell Videl. Maybe he's been able to translate the rest of the list. Yeah. The boss has a request for you. Not a message, but a request. A Whitehorn dragon has been showing up in the Aldina Plains. The boss wants you to kill it. Since when did the Bloodwings become agents of justice? Interested in protecting the world from dragons? Hey, we're not out to save the world. This is just to put an end to Zavid's madness. Did Zavid do something in particular? He's been harassing exorcists, trying to get more information on that dragon. That's got the Abbey on alert which makes trouble for us. Our spies in the Abbey can't operate under these conditions. And that's where we come in. Does that mean Zavid is in the Aldina Plains too? Got it in one. Just be careful. Zavid and that dragon are even more agitated than usual. Let's go. Are you gonna fight Zavid again? The time has come. Wow, is that Long Dao's dust? That's one of the Omega Elixir ingredients! You found it! You really found it! Yeah, it's proof your research is right. Thanks! I've just managed to translate the description of the second ingredient. Here, take this and... Oh, 
What's wrong? Your face is red. Hey, you're burning up. It's fine. I'm pretty much always running a fever. That makes it even worse. We need to get you home so you can rest up. But I'm still translating the recipe. You heard me. All right. She's scary. Is she your sister or something, Laffy said? Well, it's kind of a long story. Oh, okay. Well, you seem to have a pretty complicated life. Do you think he's always that sick? Wouldn't surprise me. I was weak when I was a kid, too. He's probably been like this since he was born. That must be why his parents named him Videl. It means to live. Huh. I never thought about that. Luffy said is like that, too. It means one who lives. One who lives. And he wants to be an explorer when he grows up. I feel sorry for him. But if he drinks the Omega Elixir, I think he can get better. When he sets off on his adventures, will you let him aboard the Von Eltia, Aizen? I suppose I could cut him a deal. You'd charge him? <laughs> I'm a pirate, kid. Comes with the territory. But I promise you, I won't charge him too much. <laughs> I suppose that'll have to do. One who lives. I did not know that Lafayette's name had meaning behind it. <laughs> Didn't mean much in the end. I poured my soul into getting him through. But he's still dead all the same. Hope. <laughs> what a waste. You really think it was pointless? What else am I supposed to think? It won't bring him back. Thank you.